very good striker, stopping and scoring goals in first four games. I think three goals or four goals already. So scoring machine in the middle of Vasile is the brain. Welcome to another edition of the No Chof Des podcast. Now, this is a very special one because as you can see, I've got three guests with me. This is a preview of our match against Flora Tallinn, a club which I know nothing about. I'm sure you guys watching don't know too much about. I've got three experts. First of all, Trevor Elhi, professional footballer in Estonia. His club are top of the league at the moment, ahead of Flora Tallinn. Trevor, welcome to Shahidin. Hey, I'm doing good. Thanks for the invitation. And thanks for joining us. I know it's 10 o'clock in Estonia at the moment, so we're not going to take up too much of your time. You probably had training today or something. Yeah, in the morning. There you go. <laughs> He's waiting all day to be on this podcast. So we we appreciate your time there, Trevor. Thank you very much for joining us. And um, my guests here, I don't know how you're watching it, but at the moment they're below me. Brothers, Nate and Reese from the Estonian Football Podcast. Nate, I'm going to call you Nathan. I'm going to call you Nathan. Sorry. I've got, I've got, I've got, I've got a habit of calling my friends Nate that are Nathan. So, sorry, my bad. But um, how are you guys doing? You good? Yeah, all yeah, good. Not bad. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, man. Really appreciate it. So, let, let, without further ado, let's talk about Flora Tallinn. Um, a side who got knocked out of the Champions League qualifier, if I'm not mistaken. <coughs> same as us. Lost to... Uh, oh, uh, Legia Vosso, who we beat last season in the in the qualifiers. So, um, yeah, what 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 do I need to know as an Omonia support? What do I need to know about uh, Flora Tallinn? Anyone can start. I don't mind. Educate me, please. Uh, I'll, I'll go. Um, I, I I like Flora personally. Um, I think sorry, Trevor, but I think they are the best side in Estonia. Um. That they are currently unbeaten so far in the league, do have two games in hand on Lavadia, and I think they will finish the season unbeaten. Um, as far as Europe goes, um, they are getting better. They were only one game away last year from um, Europa League group stage, um, which would have been huge for Estonian football. Um, they did lose to Dynamo Zagreb, I think it was, which was obviously only one leg because of COVID and you know, so you could say disadvantaged a bit. Um, and then knocked yeah. us out of the Champions League, ironically. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that they're slowly getting better. In Europe, they've got the, the foundation of, of the players, you know, sapping in up front, natural goal scorer, get goals. I thought they were very unlucky against Legia Warsaw as well. Um, they, they could have easily come away with that with a win and, you know, pre- progress further in the Champions League. Brilliant. Reese. what you got? Yeah, I agree. I think um, there's just a few tweaks maybe needed for an Estonian team to get into a European group stage. Um, I think the Conference League is probably one of the best things that could have happened for countries like Estonia, uh, Cyprus. Um, it gives them a chance to compete in Europe. Um, uh, Whoever wins this one, the guaranteed group stage for something, whether it is the Europa League or the Conference League. So I think Flora have got a really good chance, especially now it's back to two legs. Uh, fans are allowed back in. So as you see in European games as well, whoever's the home team has a massive advantage. Um, so I think whoever can get the biggest lead at home, if they can get a big win, I think they'll go on to win the tie. And I do fancy Flora. We had a look at some um, betting markets before we came on, and uh, Ammonia are clear favourites, um, which we thought was a little bit tight. Uh, we think Flora can definitely give them a good run for their money. Uh, they, yeah, as we said, because they got a good spine. They've had some players that have played in Europe before um, for European teams, so they're not. I think a lot of people see Estonian teams and automatically write them off because. They've never been in like European group stages before, but teams like Flora, even Lavadia, when they were lu- unlucky against Dundalk, uh, they're not far away from getting it. I think it either this year might be a bit too much to ask, but next season for sure, I think if Flora can keep their team together, they can definitely get into some group stage. Brilliant. So Trevor, based on your experience playing against Flora, who are the players 
to look out for? What system should we expect to see? Uh, well, Flora has a very good striker, Sapin and scoring goals in first four games. I think three goals or four goals already. So <laughs> scoring machine in the middle, Vasilev is the brain. Without him, I don't know how Flora will play without him, but but at the moment he's playing and he's like Estonian maestro. <laughs> his, his, I, will, I will add to that. His legs just don't stop. He's nearly 37 years old. And yeah, he's you, just, he's an engine. You can see like he's getting like, he's not playing 90 minutes anymore, like with full power, you can see, but he's still like, he's still the brain in Flora and in Estonia also, national team. And I can say in uh, in defense line, Kusk is the leader right now. And the other central defender, Pürk, I played with them both. I know them both very well, but Kusk is Kusk right now is the leader in in Flora. And I've, they have a really good team. Like they've been playing together for like three, four years already. Almost same team every year. That's why they. They've been winning also, but I cannot, I cannot agree with you about this year. That <laughs> there will be like very, very close Lavada Flora, but hopefully we will win. <laughs> well, see, this is it. Just for those viewing, Flora are the reigning champions and they're second in the table. Uh, and uh, Trevor plays for Lavada, the team that's top of the league, who are six points ahead. Um, I think Flora got two games in hand, so this is this is a very interesting conversation. We we're deviating a little bit, but it's uh, it's interesting to know because, like I said, I'm, I don't know too much about the Estonian league. I've been to Tallinn. I went there for a day actually because I was on my way to to Russia to Moscow, and I took the train from Tallinn to Moscow, and that was some experience. But Tallinn's a beautiful city. Um, it's small, but it's it's very cozy as well. People are, are very friendly. They hear an English voice, and they're like, "What's this? What's going on?" You know, mm. but you know, it was, it was a very nice. It's got very good memories about the place. But um, in terms of Florida Football Club, gentlemen, what, what can we expect from a system? Do they play a four-three-three, a four-four-two? Is it a four-two-three-one? Do you guys know? Um, it, it tends to vary. You know, they have um, Saffin tends to play up front by himself with um, Oyama and uh, Zenyov kind of on the wings, um, and then you'll have uh, Vasilev, um, Sumit, Poom. Kind of there, so four, three, three, kind of maybe you could say, or three, three usually. Poom yeah. is that like Mart Poom? Is he? Are they related? Mart Poom's son, yeah. Is his son the goal in Derby? Derby. Yeah. Oh, wow. Born in Derby, yeah. Okay. All right, that he's makes really, sense. Huh? He's a really good player as well. I really like him. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, so do they have many? Foreign players, then, because they sound like Estonian players that you've mentioned. Do they have any non-Estonians in the in the squad? You know, it's Flora, mainly, think, Flora is Flora fully Estonian, I believe. Um, wow. I don't think they have any. Yeah, um, what I'd say about Flora is that they've got a really, really strong start in eleven. Um, when it comes to rotation uh, in the league, when they do it against, say, the lesser teams it's easy, more easier for them to do. But um, maybe when it comes to European competition, if they need to rotate, it might be a bit more difficult for them because I'm not sure if they, if the quality on the bench is there for European football as it is in the league. Um, so if they do get some injuries of like Sapinen or Vas uh, Vasilev uh, goes, goes down injured, it might be a little bit difficult for them to replace them with the quality they need to progress. Understood. So, Trevor, you're you're a left-back, is that correct? You play on the left-hand side? Yeah, both sides. Both sides. So, when you played, have you played against the right side of, of uh, Flora? Have you played against the right winger, the, the right back? Not this year. No? I mean, the but... reason why I ask is because our, probably our most dangerous player, believe it or not, is our left-back, uh, Jan Lesiak's. Croatian, uh, sorry, he's from Czech Republic, but he played in Croatia. Um, and he's he got last season got about 16 assists. He's got a fantastic left foot, delivery in the box is brilliant. And a lot of our goals obviously come from that left-hand side. 
Um, so what can we expect from Flora's right-hand side? Are they strong on that side? Are they good defensively? Yeah, the right wing is, I think it's quite decent. They have, I think, Senov in front and uh, Lilander in defense. And they're like both good, aggressive, fast. Lilander is like really aggressive young boy. Zinio is like experienced, fast, maybe not not defending so well, but good player. Great stuff. And obviously the middle of the park is a is a strong area for Flora. We've got Jordi Gomez, who's at Wigan and Sunderland nice. and the thing at uh, Swansea. I think he was a, he started in Barcelona's academy. And we've also got Gusolo, who's a young uh, central midfield, he's 22, 23 years. I think actually I think he's 24, but he's had a, a very good two or three seasons. So they're effectively our two main guys, but we brought in mixed discarude as well. Um, so again, American international, we've got the experience there. So in terms of a midfield battle, what should we as Armonia fans expect from, from uh, Flora? Are they going to be tenacious? Will they be uh, dropping off? Will they be pressing? I, I'd like to think um, it, the I wouldn't say they drop off. It, it, it would depend who will play, um, I guess. You know, Marcus Poom is, I'd say, more direct of a player. Um, same with Asiev. Um, you know, they can both pick a pass in behind the defence into Tappanen or down the wings. Um, well, I'd say uh, Martin Miller and Sumitz are more um, sitting back. I'd, I'd probably say it would be Poom and Vasiev sitting in there. So I'd, I'd, I'd think Flora would go for it with the midfield, um, trying to look for those killer balls and maybe hitting on the counter-attack to like Oyama or uh, Zenyov, something like that, be stepping in and that, that might be the game plan. Okay. And uh, what about the, the goalkeeper then? I don't know, again, I don't know too much about him. Our goalkeeper won um, player of the season <laughs> last year, Fabiano. He, in fact, he announced that they signed a new contract. And he had a spell at Porto, uh, I think it was at Fenerbahce as well. Uh, so he's a fairly experienced goalkeeper. What about what about the goalkeeper at uh, Flora? So we, um, I might get his name, uh, pronounce it one. Uh, Egonen, Egonen. Um, Egonen. So um, Egonen. Um, he had some time in uh, Norway with um, Lillestrøm. Uh, uh, I really like him. I think he's good. But we mentioned in a podcast before when we were speaking, when we were talking about all the teams in Estonia, he tends, when we've watched him, he tends to flap a little bit when he's coming for a ball. So he's not, he doesn't seem as comfortable like claiming crosses or whatever from what we've seen of him. Um, but his shot stopping and his distribution, they, he, seem, he seems like a really steady goalie. You know, he must be doing something right because he's, you know, he had time in Norway with uh, Lederstrom. He's in the Estonian national team. Uh, he, it seems he's the second choice now from... Uh, the one from Arsenal, uh, called uh, Ye- Jacob uh, Hein. Um, but yeah, I think he's really good. But yeah, the only the only flaw from what I've seen from him personally is that when it comes with crosses or whatever, he tends to be a bit, can't make up his mind whether to catch it, punch it. Um, so I hope I'm wrong. But from, yeah, what I've, what I've seen from him, that's, uh, that's my uh, opinion on him. But I still think in terms of shot stopping, he's pretty solid. He's also kept the um, most clean sheets in the league this season as well. He's kept seven clean sheets um, in his this this season, which is the most in the league. So he probably is one of the better goalkeepers in the league. Um, yeah, so pretty decent goalkeeper. Was it the thing is? Um... You know, we've we faced some pretty decent goalkeepers over the past couple of seasons, especially in Europe. We got we were lucky to be in the Europa League last season, and you know we've faced PSV Eindhoven, we faced uh, faced Park Salonica, um, Granada, decent teams. But the problem that we had last season, I'd say, not just the inexperience in Europe, not the energy levels and the concentration, but I think we didn't take our chances. And at this level, be it, you know Europa League, Champions League, you need to take your chances because you'll be punished. It's not as if in the, in the domestic league in Cyprus, we can create six or seven opportunities a game and we might not score any of them, but we know second half we'll get another five or six. It's not like that in Europe. So against 
the likes of uh, Flora, who are going to be a, a difficult side. You know, we expect them to, to sit back and try and hit us on the counter because a lot of teams do that against us, um, especially when we're the favourites going into these games. But then again, as I said, because this club is, is fairly new to me, I don't know too much about them. You mentioned the, the danger men. So I'm thinking, wow, are they, are they going to be on the front foot against us? I don't know. This is going to be a very interesting one for me anyway. I will. So I said, they, they have um, faced site prop opposition before in 2018 oh yeah um against was it apoel oh well yeah we don't yeah. talk about them yeah <laughs> um we don't talk about them <laughs> flora actually beat them 2-0 oh really um, okay well at, we can talk about home. that game if you want <laughs> um and then they, they got thumped 5-0 away from home so fuck's sake <laughs> <laughs> Trevor, what kind of system should we expect then? Because the first leg is in Cyprus. I think it's a it's a seven o'clock kickoff in Cyprus. It's still going to be about 30 degrees. Um, right now, during the day, it's about 40. So it's going to be quite humid. What's the, what do you think the game plan is going to be? 30 degree here at 7 p.m.? Probably they, they will start like easy, I think, because we've had like two months also like 30 degrees here, but it's not the same like in Cyprus, you know. They have to be like smart. They have to play smart, not to run too much. But uh, I really don't know. I probably they will fall back and wait for counter attacks because they have like really fast wingers and good striker. Well, this is it. I think that's the system that we're used to team playing against us, and we te we tend to struggle against clubs that are very quick on the counter, a lot of pace, because granted our, our fullbacks like to get forward. Shehu, Nigerian international, is very quick. Um, Lesiax, again, Czech Republic, left back, very quick, but he gets forward quite a bit. So at least our two central defenders. And since Lufna left us to go back to Copenhagen, he's now at Videoton, we've got Adam Lang, who's a Hungarian international, and uh, Thomas Hubachan, who's for the Slovakian national team. But the thing is, Hubachan is 35, 36. Lang is 30, but he's obviously not as rapid or pacey as we'd like him to be. So I think that will be a problem for us. Um, but again, I think this is a kind of game where, as Trevor said, it's going to be very important for, for the players to conserve their energy because the humidity, the heat, it, 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 will, it, will, sap it, it will sap their energy out of them. So I think both teams are going to be very, very cautious. But... Can you guys tell me about this manager? Because I read somewhere that he's 34, 35 years old. Is that correct? Yeah. Head coach. Um, yeah, he's been there a few years. It's hard. I've, I've tried doing some research on him before, but um, it's hard to find stuff about him. Um, if you go on Wikipedia and you search Jürgen Hen, it, put, it takes you to a bridge in the United States. So, <laughs> so it's hard to, unless you go on, I've had a look at transfer, but yeah, but he's very young. Um, been there a few years. Obviously, won league titles. Very, very attacking manager. So it's all good. Trevor, what do you know about him then, mate? Because as I said, thirty-four years old. I mean, let's be honest; it's not a new thing to have a young manager. Many clubs have young managers, but for him to be so successful at such a young age in that league, it must tell you something about how good he is. Yeah, I think he's like new school coach, you can say. Young coach, really like, I don't know. He, he's good with players. You can, you can see that he's like, the players are mentally also like in good shape. They are trusting him. And there's like harmony in Flora. I don't know why. I don't know how. Like already many years. And that's why they've been winning. And their coaching staff, like the second coach, I played with him. He's 9, 29 or 28, head coach, 40, 34. So like all the young guys, it's like different. Same in Levada right now, actually. We have also like quite young coaching staff. But today we're talking about Flora. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, but I, I guess in Estonia, it's like, it's new thing. Many, many teams are getting younger coaches. Do you think that's because um, the nation, they're trying to develop players because they know 
that there are going to be clubs around Europe wanting to see these players and sign them. For example, maybe in Russia, maybe in in Romania, maybe in in other countries in in Eastern Europe, that look at these players and they think, wow, they're being developed by young coaches because they have a new mentality, as you said, a new way of thinking. Yeah, that's possible. The, they're they're trying new new things. They're they have a sports director who's like really professional guy. Maybe many people in Estonia doesn't like him, but he's really trying to do something new and i think it's right now maybe it's working <laughs> fair enough well look, um one more question with regards to uh, their the system you mentioned the goalkeeper it was uh reese you think he might yeah. be a bit of a flappy goalkeeper what do you think their main weakness is do they have a main weakness that you think mm, i don't know if they could face again face a team with that kind of ability they'll destroy him um for me, I'd say I think they've got like a they've got a really good spine. Uh, so Jimmy said they got you know Sapin and uh, Vasilev, Kusk, and then Iganen in goal. Um, so that's like the main backbone for them. Um, maybe they've got the tendency to switch off late in games. Um, I've noticed that for them, like in Estonian football in general, it seems late on in games is when a lot of goals occur. Um, so, yeah, I'd say maybe the last 15 minutes, if, say, it's nil-nil, um, Amonia might want to start, you know, peppering the goal with some shots because it might be the best time for him. Flora might be a bit tired. Um, I'm not sure how the intensity of Amonia are, or um, obviously Flora, their full-time team um, as well. But, tiredness can play an effect um, but yeah the, the tendency to switch off um, especially if Flora score first the five minutes after that is the perfect time for Amonia to attack them instead of trying to just regroup and get a feel for the ball if I was Amonia I'd go for it and just get the ball into the box because that would be the best time for them to score. Brilliant. Well, I will add to that, sorry. It's it's hard to pick a weakness, um, you know, for Flora when they're so dominant, you know, in the league. Um, you know, they don't concede many goals. They, they score a ton of goals. You could say, you know, they there was one a few weeks ago um, when they drew free all with um, Pida when they're 3-0 up and just imploded and crazy goals to concede as well. It was so the concentration side of that, you know, maybe complacency is something to be aware of, but it's, it's hard to pick a weakness of a team like Flora who literally dismantle opponents. You know, I don't want to, sorry, Trevor, but they did beat Lavadia 4-2 this season, you know, who are the main competitors. They're, they're a very good side and, you know, it's just hard to find weaknesses. But do you remember what happened three days later? Yeah. <laughs> what happened? Tell me, tell me, tell me. What have I missed? <laughs> Won the cup. Cup. Against All right. Cup final. <laughs> Fair enough. You know what? That's, that's a perfect response, isn't it? <laughs> and with that, with that, we we both bet really heavily on Flora to win that uh, because of the the 4-2 win they did. And then, yeah, yeah. Lavadia went and, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. I, I even I even put on Twitter saying um, on on the podcast page saying I find it very hard to look past Flora for this game. <laughs> Kiss of death, there, mate. Kiss of death. You don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> well, Trevor, you know I, I've got, I know we only got a few more minutes because obviously it's quite late out there. But um, what what was the game plan going into the final or going into these matches against Flora for you guys? Obviously, you you got your 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 analyst. You've got the tactics, all that kind of stuff. What was the main uh, system that you felt we can get at them? We can really cause them problems. Uh, Levada is this year. Levada always playing with same style. We have our own style. We don't change it, even if it's against Flora, against Perno, Curesara. We we play the same. We just trying to 
keep the ball, be patient. And that's it. We, we didn't prepare like any different different way against Flora. So it's just basically play your game and whatever happens, happens. I mean, I'm, I'm fully expecting us to start off the game in, in second gear. In fact, the first half an hour of the game, I don't see us playing with high intensity, but second half, 100%, because that's what we do. We, we conserve our energy and in the second half, we really go in there. But um, one more question for you guys, from me, obviously, about the, the game. This is about the second leg. What should we expect going into that second leg at Flora Stadium? Like I said, I don't know much about the stadium. I don't know how many fans are going to be there. Is it going to be a hostile atmosphere? What should I expect? Um. I, when they played Frankfurt last season, they had I think they had about eight thousand there. Um, so, uh, COVID permitting, I'm not sure uh, quite what the restrictions are now uh, in Estonia for fans. Um, but yeah, I think if they can get close to eight thousand, I reckon they can get a good atmosphere going. Even when um, now there's three, four hundred people there, yeah. they. Um, they can get a good atmosphere going in this. I'm not sure how big the stadium is, about 15,000. 15. Um, so, yeah, about 15,000. So when there's like four, 500 people there, they still get an atmosphere going. So I think Flora can start well. Um, the fans will get behind them, regardless of what the first leg score was. If they can get an early goal, uh, Flora usually do score early. Um they like to see a lot of the ball as well when they're playing at home, it seems. So, yeah, um, if they can get away with tomorrow with a draw, I think going back to Tallinn, I fully expect them to go on to... I wouldn't be surprised if they go on to win it. There we go. Nathan? I agree, yeah. Like you were saying, even the atmospheres now, especially in um, Parnu, small little beach stadium a few hundred people there they had um, when Pida played there um, against Slask um, packed out stadium huge atmosphere um, and um, I totally expect the same in, in Tallinn in, in, in a big stadium more fans um, and I think Flora could get a decent result as well yeah especially at home keep keep the score low as long as they don't concede many I know away go- uh, goals away goals are um Scrapped on me. Yeah. Scrapped now, so that's huge. Um, well, you could say it's huge. It depends if the first leg's free all, doesn't it? <laughs> 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 but um, yeah, keep, keep the score low. Um, try get a goal, and I think at home, yeah, I agree with with Reece Flora. I think I, I would fancy Flora at home. Trevor, what's your take on this? What do you think is going to happen? Do you have a prediction? It depends what's going to happen tomorrow, I think, because tomorrow Flora will be for sure. They're underdogs. So if they can keep like good score, like 0 0, 0 1 in Thailand, everything can happen. But if they lose first game big, I think it's over. But I think they will not let in too many goals because. It's a good team. They played very well against Lega. There was a chance to go through this this game. Ref didn't give the penalty and Lega scored from counter-attack. So, unlucky. Everything can happen tomorrow. Absolutely. And uh, this is a, a very intriguing game for me, as I said, because prior to this, I didn't know too much about Flora. And it's been absolutely great to talk to all three, three of you. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you uh, Trevor for, for jumping on I know it's quite late out there and uh, you know you professional footballers you need your beauty sleep you know <laughs> we do too as well oh you do as well okay. <laughs> so I, I need it more than anyone look at me for fuck's sake anyway gentlemen before I let you guys go is there anything that you want to plug any social media anything you want to promote yeah, just follow us on Twitter um, Estonian uh, FBP Um listen to our podcasts uh we're on instagram as well same handle um support's great obviously we've taken off in the i say taken off we've reached over 500 followers now which is obviously great for us we were only expecting about 10 or 20 so um 
Rome wasn't just, building the day, mate. Yeah, just keep plugging just away. Yeah, keep plugging yeah, away. It's brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Trevor, are you on any social media? Do you want to mention anything? Are you on Instagram or anything like that? I'm on Instagram, but not not too much. This time. <laughs> <laughs> No worries, wonderful. Well, look, that's it for another episode of the No Chocolates podcast. Like, subscribe, tell your nunna. It's going to be a difficult one tomorrow. It's going to be very, very difficult. But hey, listen, this is the part of this part and parcel of football. You can't play easy games. There's no such thing as an easy game. So until next time, Gobelia, promise you. Like.